starting this event tonight um, and to have the presenters that we have on the screen because our journey um, with Child Poverty Action Group Scotland began back in 2015. So it's you know quite a number of years ago, um, I worked with one of Sarah's um, colleagues who was in post at the time and the, pre the group um, that came before Leanne's group. So we, um, we got together and had a lot of discussion um, back at that time, which led to the publishing of the Parent Council Guidance in 2016. So that was published by um, Child Poverty Action Group. Um, but Glasgow really did help to shape that because there were people in the city who felt passionate that parent councils had to be part of the solution, um, you know, to the issues that were highlighted. So it does go back quite some way. I think we have made a lot of progress, but I think we still have a long, long way to go. And it was a great opportunity for me to go back and have a look at what we did in 2015, 2016, when we were shaping that guidance and to look at the issues that were coming up then that are still coming up now. I think we have made great strides and some of that is down to the work that you know Glasgow City Parents Group has done um, to help get information out there about financial entitlements. So I think we've come quite a long way, um, both at Glasgow City Parents Group level and with some of the things that are happening in our schools, you know, like the, the financial um, inclusion support officers, et cetera, who are in school. So I think that's been real progress. I also think that we've made a lot of progress around school uniform, both in promoting reuse and, you know, we've worked closely with um, groups such as Apparel Exchange, but also within schools, there's a lot of reuse of uniform. Um, so from a sustainability point of view, it's great, but also from a financial perspective, lots of parent councils are working with their schools to reduce the cost. So looking at where, you know, they can maybe change the colour or have a colour that is available um, in the supermarket for lower price. So people are really beginning to think about reducing the cost and promoting reuse of the uniform. Reviewing fundraising events, I think there's a lot of that has gone on, but I think there is much more um, scope um, for progress. And I know um, that having spoken to, um, to Catherine about the work that has been done at Parkview and knowing about what has been done um, in Hillhead, you're going to hear about that from presenters who are you know, better placed to talk about it than me. But what you will hear is about the approach to fundraising events, because these, these types of events can put a lot of pressure on children and their families. So I, I think that we've come you know, part way, but I think we've still got quite a way to go. Um, in Glasgow, we have better access to ICT equipment. The iPad rollout has been fantastic, um, especially, you know, in the secondary schools. Some of this is down to COVID. You know, during COVID, lots of devices were made available. Schools were able to access devices and dongles and, you know, data for families to enable them to get online. So I, I think that, you know, we don't thank COVID for very much, but one of the things that we, you know, we have seen as an advantage is this increase um, in ICT equipment for families. Focusing on parent councils, I, I think that fundraising for parent councils is still um, it's still a major feature. It's not really what parent councils were set up to do, but I can totally understand why parent councils do it. There's a bit of a double-edged sword when it comes to fundraising, because what the fundraising um, conducted by parent councils can do is to help subsidise school events and provide some of those fun activities that you know parents want to provide for children. However, you know, we see that these events can put lots of pressure on families. So asking, you know, people to come and spend money at events is, you know, can pose real, real challenges um, when a family might be struggling to, you know, to keep the lights on. Um, so I think that we have to really think carefully about what we do. And I know that you're going to hear some examples from the schools about how they manage to have those fun events and to promote a sense of community without always asking families for money. And I, you know, I really hope that this will inspire other parent councils to think about not constantly having events 
that you know require everybody to bring a pound or you know to to do things like that so um it is a double-edged sword it's still there but i think it requires careful thought so my sort of parting shot really before i hand over um to colleagues um, who can talk in more detail is that any planning that a parent council is doing I think has to be done in strong partnership with the school and you're going to hear from two schools where I would say that is very much in evidence you know there's a, a strong dialogue there's lots of discussion everybody's on the same page and everybody's pushing in the same direction because there's no point in a school really signing up to look at you know poverty proofing the school if the parent council is pushing in another direction. So that joint planning is absolutely vital. So good dialogue, um, creative solutions, some of which come from outside. It's not always about asking people internally for the money. You know, we've run sessions um, on, you know, where we have given advice on how to apply for local area committee grants, et cetera, which don't require parent councils to always be asking parents um, for, for the money. So on that note, I'm going to end because I think that the speakers have got a lot more interesting things to say than I have. And I think I'm handing over to Sarah from Child Poverty Action Group Scotland, who is going to um, you know, deliver her, her very interesting presentation. So over to you, Sarah. Okay, doke. Um, well, good evening, everyone, um, and thanks very much to, to Leanne and Catherine um, for, for inviting me along tonight. Um, I, as as uh, they've both said, uh, my name's Sarah. I work at Child Poverty Action Group in Scotland, and I work on the, the Cost of the School Day project. Um, I suppose the, what, what that is in, in a nutshell, um, you know, we know there are, are lots of potential costs at school, um, you know, uniform, lunch, travel, resources, trips, clubs, lots and lots of different things. Um, and we also know that when those costs can't be met, um, that can get in the way of children and young people on lower incomes fully taking part at school. Um, and it can put a lot of financial pressure on families um, who often have quite stretched budgets. Um, at cost of the school day, we work with um, with school communities, we work with local authorities. Um, I suppose just to look at these questions here um, at, at the most basic, you know, firstly, what's it like at your school for families on low incomes? Um, are there any cost pressures? Are there any barriers um, created by, by costs or, or income? Um, and then secondly, you know, how do we how do we get around them? What solutions are there? How do we make sure we're reducing costs, boosting incomes where we can, and making sure that children and, and young people are fully involved? Um, as Catherine said, um, Cost of the School Day, it's a, a national project, um, but it began in Glasgow many moons ago. Um, and, and so it's always really, really nice to do to do inputs like this, especially because I know there's so much good stuff going on um, in, in Glasgow schools around this. Um, what, what I'm going to look at um, just over the next few slides um, is, um, I suppose, big picture, what are some of the, the challenges facing families in Glasgow right now? Um, and I think trying to focus on why parent councils are really, really well placed to be helping with those challenges, um, whether that's about awareness and, and careful planning of what you're doing with, with family budgets in mind, um, getting the word out there about financial help, um, or about consulting with parents and hearing from them so you can advocate for them and, and make sure your school is thinking along those cost of the school day lines um, if that's not happening already. Um, so, you know, we're all, we're all living in the world at the moment and seeing what's happening um, financially, I suppose. So I'm not gonna labor these points too much, um, but, it's it's useful to kind of um, start um, start from here. I think um, I think the word poverty is is you know it means different things to different people. It brings different things to people's mind um, when it's said. Um, today, when I'm saying it, it means basically this: um, 
it's when people are struggling to pay for essentials and to take part in society in the way that everyone else is, is able to. Um, and that, that experience is hugely common. Um, we're talking a quarter of all children in Scotland recognised as living in poverty um, and a higher average than that in Glasgow, um, just, just under 30%. Um, and you'll be all be coming from lots of different schools with different kind of um, different kind of demographics. So for some of you, the proportion of children on lower incomes is going to be much higher than that. Um, I think the the important thing about child poverty um, and why we shouldn't ever accept it as you know just one of those things that's always going to be there um, is just because. It affects every single aspect of a child's life, you know, where they live, their family life, their education, their health, um, play, friendships, you know, there's not really an aspect of a child's life that is improved in any way um, from living on a low income. That's 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 why it is so important. Um, and it's not... Um, if we're talking about who who is in poverty or who is at risk of of falling into poverty, um, you know the old kind of preconception that it's just families who aren't working. Um, that's you know very much not the case. Um, over two thirds of children in poverty have a parent in work, but the wages that are coming in um, aren't enough to get by, um, and and just to afford the basics. Um, that is um i suppose big surprise um you know that's hugely wearing and difficult and stressful for for parents and carers um these are, are quotes here from a couple of glasgow parents um the one on the left there talking about waking up every mor morning worrying about where the money is coming from to pay for bills you know that relentlessness of it um, is is huge um, and you know having to tell children no 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 all of the time um, obviously you know mental health suffering from constant worry and you know where, where the money is coming from just to survive um, there's a lot of chat about the cost of living crisis at the moment um, I heard someone describe it as it's not a cost of living crisis it's a cost of surviving crisis um, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and the quote on the right, um, you know, someone who doesn't qualify for, for financial help, um, but, um, and apparently earns enough to like pay for everything, um, but um, is, is finding that very difficult to deal with. And I think there are a lot of families in that position, just above the threshold for, for getting some financial help, um, but really, really struggling. Um, and that's a that's a really really tricky thing. Um, <clears throat> the quote, the the wee bit there at the end about parents just need to do without to ensure. Um, ensure I've got my big face in the way. Um, ensure that the kids don't um, go without. Um, couldn't read the quote there. Um, that's that's something we hear lots and lots and lots. It's um, you know school costs are never going to be the biggest costs that families face. Sometimes they seem quite small, um, but they do make a bit of a dent in family budgets, and that might not always be obvious um, to anyone because parents go out of their way to pay to pay those costs to meet those costs so that their kids can take part and be the same as everyone else. Um, but it does mean, though, that parents are going without and it means that they're cutting corners on other essentials. Um, th the bit we're all <laughs> sick to the back teeth of hearing about, um, cost of living, um, you know, two years of COVID with all of the financial stresses um, that created and we're, we're hit by this. Um, you know, you, you you hear the news every day, don't you? But, you know, inflation is now, I think, at a 42 year high. Wages and social security benefits aren't keeping pace with the cost of everything that a family needs. And that's having a really direct effect on living standards, even more so than, than you know, in the past. Um, I think it's really important to point out that families on lower incomes are at the very sharp end of that. 
they're less likely to have any, any cushion of savings, less likely to get cost of living increases and in wages, and, and um, you know, benefits have been frozen and cut and, and kind of capped for, for about 10 years now. So that's, that's, um, that's, that's a, you know, affecting how much money comes into households as well. And also families on lower incomes are spending a larger proportion of, of their income on the, the things that are costing so much at the moment, like food and energy. So I suppose understanding and taking action on costs and doing what you can to help within I don't know, within your sphere of influence, within your, your, your school, within your parent council, it's just really critical right now for families. Um, just as a, a quick aside, I wanted to say something about um, kind of assumptions about poverty, um, you know, about who or who isn't struggling financially. Um, and I think it's important because poverty doesn't look one certain way. Um, and, and trying to trying to guess or identify who is is experiencing that um i think it firstly risks stereotyping families um and it means that you might be missing folk out um you know there are a lot of people in difficult situations who maybe weren't a, a, you know one or two or, or, or whatever years ago um it's kind of a thing that can affect anyone at the moment um I think families are moving in and out of poverty all of the time. Data on things like postcodes or who's on free school meals or, or those sort of things that schools generally hold. Um, they don't always tell the full picture. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned before, families are, are going to great lengths to not uh, disclose the um, situations at times, not always, but but that's that's a common thing that we hear about. Um, so I suppose the the point of that would be, um, you know, you you as parent council members won't know who's struggling and who isn't in your school, um, and and essentially it doesn't really matter. Um, we're always going to have kids on low incomes in every school, um, so I think it's about kind of acknowledging that, avoiding assumptions about that, and trying to design things so that they're good for everyone, so that they're inclusive of everyone. I think that's a, a good start. Um, I think there are, I was, I was having a wee think of this while I was, I was putting the slides together, because I, I really, really think this is true. Um, I think there are a few reasons why parent councils are so important um, to this, this whole area. And, and as Catherine said, so important that, um, you know, that it, it's not about the parent council pushing in a different direction um, to, to what, what the school is trying to do um, around cost of the school day. Um, I, think, I think you can have a different role and do different things on, on cost of the school day that can't happen with just you know the head teacher or whoever taking a lead um you're part of the parent carer community you're part of your local community you know what's going on and you can communicate with um the, with parents in a different way um you're experts in your own schools um you know the costs that families are being asked for you know how things are done you know which costs might be tricky the ones that had always done it like really short notice things like that um i think um with your role um or your your duty i suppose in in being a voice for parents and representing the parent forum i think that's really crucial when it comes to this um you can consult on what's happening with costs where they could be reduced where there could be more support, um, you can be asking parents about that and, and advocating for that with your school uh, management when, when needed. Um, and the things that you do and organise, um, you can reduce cost pressures for families. Um, you know, parents, parents actually often say to us that sometimes their schools are all right, there's not many school costs, but that there is a lot of pressure coming from their parent councils in terms of fundraising or, you know, costly events, things like that. Um, so, you know, there's a real opportunity there to design things so that that's not the case. Um, 
when when we don't do that, um, when we don't we don't design you know fundraising, charity days, events, fairs, celebrations, things like that. Um, when we don't do that in an inclusive and cost aware way, um, it can just create some really unhappy experiences for children. Um, these are all quotes from from a report we um, we put out a wee bit earlier. Yeah, a wee bit earlier this year, um, which was called The Cost of Having Fun at School. Um, and that was based on direct work with um, 8,000 children in schools in Scotland and England and Wales. Um, and you can see just from the quotes here, I won't, I won't read them out, um, but you can see the impact that kind of costly fun events that are sometimes seen as optional or not a big deal. You can see the, the impact that that can have. Um, across the board, we found that fundraising and charity days were add into financial pressure on families. We were finding that not everyone could take part um, and enjoy events like dress up days, non uniform days, things like that. Um, activities like school fairs, when there was lots of money to get into them, um, or um, uh, sorry, a charge to get into them, um, and you know nothing free to do when when you were there. Um, that was highlighting differences with with children and sometimes leading to self exclusion from it. Um, expensive leavers celebrations, whether that's primary or or kind of you know the dreaded prom um, in secondary school. Um, that was parents were saying that was putting them in a, a really impossible kind of situation um because when something happens at school children and young people want to do it they want to be part of it there's I'd say there was very very few things that are optional at school um so the I suppose children and young people spoke a lot about the costs and the social pressures of those sort of days and events and, and, and celebrations. And just really, I suppose, spoke quite often about how it made them feel embarrassed, it made them feel left out. And in lots of cases, teachers reported that pupils were missing school on those days. It was directly affecting attendance. Um, so I guess what, what really came through from that was the need to think about affordability when planning and delivering kind of activities and events, thinking about whether costs can be reconsidered, reduced, um, and also the need to be really careful about timings um, to avoid multiple costs um, happening at the same time. Um, I've seen some schools having um, cost calendars for at the start of the year where the year is very carefully marked out. Um, you know, anything that's going to incur a cost um, is um, set out at the start of the year so that there are no big surprises. And the planning of that means there's no, um, you know, there isn't 101 things at Christmas, for example. Um, so, um, been speaking a lot about reducing or avoiding costs, um, but boosting incomes through financial entitlements at school is also a really, really important part of cost of the school day and a really important part of support for families. Um, again, I won't run through all of these, um, but you know, you're probably familiar with the top ones there um, on the top row, free school meals, school clothing grant. Um, education maintenance, maintenance allowance for older um, young people. Um, there's Best Start grant um, school aged payment to help with uh, the costs of starting school. And a really, really big one that I'll just draw attention to um, in the, the middle of the bottom row, which is Scottish child payment. Um, that has um, just last week been rolled out to under 16s, all under 16s, not all under 16s, um, all eligible under 16s. Um, and it's £25 a week per child for, for um, eligible children and young people. Um, and a, the um, eligibility there is um, being on universal credit or another legacy benefit. So that's a, a whole range of people um, who are going to be eligible for that now. So that's something something really um, 
really progressive and welcome and fantastic for families. Um, it's modelled that it's going to lift 50,000 families out of poverty in Scotland um, over the next year. Um, so uh, I just want to draw your attention to that um, as, as one of the things that, that we can all be shouting about in, in every, every kind of um, wherever we can, <laughs> schools and anywhere else. Um, I think um, families aren't always getting the support that they're entitled to. Um, the um, And I think one barrier that exists to families finding out about these sort of things um, or parents say they're, they're, they don't know about it, they don't know where to go, they haven't heard about it. Um, and I think parent councils can pay, play a really big role in getting that information out there as just part of what you do. You know, your, your newsletters, um, school website, if you're, you're involved with that, um, parents meetings, your social media, posters at reception, you know, there's a million and one ways to kind of get information out about this. Um, this is, um, I actually took a picture of this on my kitchen table this morning because I got this um, just as a parent in Glasgow. Um, and I think maybe in your, um, if you've had a session on financial inclusion support officers in schools, um, they've maybe mentioned this this before. Um, so this is this is a, a leaflet that explains all of the different entitlements um, and is really useful to share with parents. Um, and I'm going to skip this slide because um, I think uh, uh, Nicola from Hillhead High is actually here today and she will talk about it herself because it is her thing. I think that quote's from Nicola at the bottom, so I'll skip this one. But this is just an example of a school kind of taking that information, giving even further um, and, and sharing that with parents. Um, nearly finally, I've, I've not, I've not got a clock in front of me, but I'm feeling I'm, I'm near to or over time. Um, but nearly finally, I just want to kind of draw your attention to the cost of the school day toolkit. Um, it's got loads of resources in it on all of these issues. Um, and it also has a template survey in it, If you, a, a template survey for parents, if you wanted to dig into this a wee bit um, with, with your parents and find out which costs are difficult, which ones could be reduced and, and what support um, might be needed. Um, so that's free on the on our website um, and um, that you can see there. And um, I'm, I'm also around any time if you want to, to have a chat about anything that you're doing or want to do in your school. Um, so I suppose I'll close here with this. Um, and it's just a few things to consider, I suppose, um, you know, when planning anything, you know, it, is it going to cost? Does it have to cost? When are we asking for money? How much notice are we giving families? Um, the, the really big question, you know, is every family going to be able to pay? And, it, and is every child going to be able to take part? And if they can, you know, what then? You know, is, is that OK? Um, if subsidies or help is available for, for anything in your school, are you sure that families know about that um, and how they get that support? Because often we hear that that's not the case. So is there is there more that could be done there? Um, for entitlements, you know, um, do you, does everyone know about those? Um, you know, anyone can experience um, can experience a uh, poverty. Anyone can can sort of be be struggling financially. So does everyone know about the support that's available? And I guess just thinking about day to day and how things are done. You know, your parent council. How how sort of income aware um, are you? Um, how how aware of all this stuff is is your parent council? Um, and is there anything that's happening? That, that you think you should change or could change. Um, I think a really important role to play is that of someone who challenges and advocates for alternatives, because I think, you know, I, I find that cost pressures in schools and, and with parent councils are 99.9% .9 of the time just they're inadvertent. Folk haven't thought about them. They haven't thought about how that might affect um, a family on a low income. Um, so, you know, if you get this, if you get what it's like for families, then 
speaking up is just really, really important because it just takes one person to do that for people to go like, oh, yeah, of course, I hadn't thought of that. Let's do it a wee bit differently. Um, and, and parents and, and children and young people really notice when you do that. It's just coming, Leanne. OK, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks so much for asking us along tonight. Um, so myself and Joanne Lamont, the Chair of the Parent Council, have worked really hard um, to be really mindful of the cost of the school day and um, do as much as we can at no a little cost to our children. I'll give you a wee, I'll give you a wee bit of my own background. Um, I grew up in Postal Park and I was aware from a very early age of the effects of money or the lack of it. And I was aware of money and um, what it, you know, the, there could be a worry around children about money. And I subsequently worked in schools, mostly in Glasgow and mostly in areas of deprivation. I had a brief spell in, um, a, a, not a brief spell, a, a short spell in a, a more affluent area of Glasgow. And they did um, a lot of fundraising and they had a lot of parents who were very, very well connected. So they could get lots of things, prizes, events, um, connect, like activities and things. And uh, they did a dress down Friday once a month where it was wear it yellow, wear it pink, wear it green, wear it whatever, where it, the kids had to go and uh, often went and buy, bought a t-shirt or, or whatever. Um, and they had to bring in two pounds for that as well. And that did kind of set me thinking at that point after a conversation with a parent after Christmas where I had made a comment that was maybe a bit silly, but I had just said, welcoming them back in after Christmas. And I had said to the child, Owen, were you spoiled rotten? And um, his mum said, I actually wasn't. Um, we're in the position, she said, um, she's, she said, it was quite open and she just made a bit of a joke about it and she said we're your classic fur coat and no drawers um she said we live in a house a fancy house that is now worth less than my mortgage because at that time the, there had been a dip in the housing um the cost of houses and she said i can't i, I can't sell it and i can hardly meet my mortgage payments so we're crippled so it did make me aware that there's poverty everywhere um, in, in every school in Glasgow there's poverty and sometimes it's easier working in, in schools um, where it, it's um, like in my own school there's 82% of my children live in SIMD 1 and 2 so we know that there are a lot of children in poverty so they, it, it, it's we, we know we need to do something about it so I, I started there about nine years ago there was a very active parent council they organised events bingo nights, lady nights, ladies nights, social nights, fairs. They worked really, really hard and they, they, they did some fabulous fundraising. And they, there was, they, we had some fun doing that as well. But sometimes they didn't get back what they put in. And um, it, they, you know, the, the fundraising maybe wasn't as great as it should, as they would have liked it to have been. And that kind of got them scratching their heads. But there was some things like, um, prizes for, for the kids who raised the most money. That didn't stick, that I couldn't, that couldn't let that one go, you know, it didn't seem right. Um, so things like that, 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 don't get me wrong, we never, we, we, we just had to kind of bring that up that that might not really be a good idea. Um, it wasn't that there was any great arguments over it or anything, but that did get us thinking, you know, we're putting a lot of work in here and a lot of the time the parent council is given over to fundraising. So just at that time, Maureen had sent us an email of funding sources. And at that point, Joanne Lamont um, joined the parent council. So all the ducks were in a row and it just seemed like a really um, a great time for change. And we had started the change in, changes. There was nobody um, in, in disagreement. Everybody in the parent council was in the same wavelength. So we have gone for um, 
it, sorry, I was going to say, Joanne, do you want to say anything at that point? Are you happy to bring you in at the next bit? Hey, bring me in at the next bit. That's fine, Catherine. I'll bring you in at the bit. You can say a wee bit about what you've been doing in the payment counts, what, what we've been doing together. Um, so we, we're really, when we have a payment council meeting, there is the funding, uh, the, 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 budge, the, the budget and their um, bank balance is discussed and what else we're going to do to keep that topped up and healthy. But that's not the, the agenda any longer. That's not the only agenda item any longer. That actually we're talking about education issues. We're talking about up and coming events or, or organising other things or, you know, like, well, I'll, actually, I'm just going to see all that. To, I'll let Joanne tell you about some of the things she's been doing. Um, and so when Maureen sent us the funding application, we shifted all our energies on to looking externally for grant funding rather than internally in our, um, in our own school. So Joanne, do you want to say a wee bit about that? Um, yeah, thanks very much, Catherine. Um, yeah, so basically when I joined the Parent Council, um, there was a, the first event that we did was a sponsored um, sports day. And we had a really, um, we had a uh, Parent Council, we were all very enthusiastic, but then when Catherine drew it to her attention that well, maybe it's not such a good idea to give a prize for the, the most amount raised, and we were like, all oh, right. And so we had to change our mindset a bit. And then the sort of penny dropped about sponsor sheets and like I hadn't considered how kids can be competitive and like, oh, how much have you got in your sheet and all that kind of stuff. So we realised that actually that's not really the best way to bring money into the school. So we went down the road of um, trying to get grants. So the first big grant we got was from the Tesco community grant, the coins in the store, the blue coins. And this was quite a few years ago when the, the top prize was 12K. It's now gone down, which I can understand because it got so competitive. Um, I think now the top prize is £1,500, but they can do it more often. Um, but we won the 12K and we got a, we got our play, playground revamped and we were like, I think it gave us the taste for actually, there's lots of funding out there if you know who to ask and what to apply for. So that we tapped into so many over the years. We've had uh, 4,000 from the Co-op Foundation. Um, we got 5,000 from Media Hill Housing Association. Like I think in the last seven, I mean, I should have totaled up, probably maybe got about 60 or 70,000 pounds over the last um, eight or nine years. Uh, so we realised that the way to go is getting involved with funding from big organisations or charities and then asking for very little from our parents. So even the Blair Vadic outdoor trip, we managed to get that fully funded sometimes where we've had to ask the pay we haven't had to ask for a penny from the parents. If we don't get full funding, then we try to get it subsidised as much as we can so that we're asking maybe for 20 or 30 pounds per child rather than 200 pounds. And we, we never want any child to be excluded. So um, if there was any parent, they know they can approach Miss Hart. If there was any parent, that, um, if they couldn't even ha you know manage the 20 or 30 pounds, there's no way they're going to be excluded because um, Catherine can source other funding. Um, we've also created a pantry in the, the, um, in the school, uh, which is for all families to access. And again, that was with funding from Glasgow Area Partnership and also some co-op foundation money that we had to set the pantry up um, a few years ago. It was mainly just before COVID times that the pantry was established through a connection the school had established with um, ASDA Foundation and Fair Share. So just getting the perishable goods from the local ASDA store. And at that point I had a tie in with the co-op and I thought, well, I can tap into their perishables as well. So between the school doing the ASDA run and me doing the co-op run, the pantry was stocked up with perish perishables most weeks and then we got the funding for the long life staples from the Glasgow Area Partnership Fund so basically the pantry went from strength to strength and there's it was it's this the way that we pitch it to the families is this food is going to waste there's no no no, no shyness about it it's not taboo just go and help yourself and it really has been such a great hit um, and we got funding from the Cora Foundation for laundry items um, so we could actually top it up with, uh, obviously things like that are quite expensive these days. Um, so we managed to get laundry and um, funding for sanitary products. So the pantry's gone from strength to strength. We've been really, really fortunate. Um, and we really feel that 
when we do events like discos where are, are our fairs it's now all about the fun and it's not about the profit so the only stall we're really make, trying to make money on uh, now is the raffle stall and that's completely optional so parents there's no obligation basically they see the prizes and think oh they're quite good um and if they want to buy a ticket they can and we've actually put the price of the tickets it's two pounds fifty per tickets which at first i thought oh, was that a bit cheeky at that amount because it's quite a lot you know usually people think five tickets for a pound or whatever but we've made the prizes are pretty good because we we ask local businesses to donate and families as well if you've got any um toiletries or whatever that you don't want or any booze families will hand it in a, a week or two before the, the event so the raffle stall is our best stall and everything else like tattoos nail bar henna free for the children so children if they come with a wee bit of money there's bric-a-brac that's very very cheap it's mainly to get things out of people's houses and re it's all about reusing upcycling and um you know the environment and stuff like that so we'll have a free book stall we'll have free free clothes or we might do i was thinking this year at the christmas fair we might do 50 pence an item for the clothing or a donation i'm still to speak to Catherine about that because we want to make a wee bit of money from the events but the main thing is the children having fun it's not about the profit if we make profit that's a sort of bonus and um, because we were even talking the other day about the teen coffee could be a donation so we're not going to say it's a pound a cup we'll do put in something if you can but equally if anyone you know we want everyone to enjoy it and not feel that there are any barriers to having fun and enjoying the day um so my top tip would be tapping into things like your housing associations COVID recovery fund we get money for for from them to do a, an international event in June it's we just want to have fun events at the school that everyone can feel included and it's an, we want it to be as an inclusive environment as possible and I think Catherine and I, and, and I both have kind of learned from each other along the way and I must say as well Leanne I can't uh, thank you enough for it. see all the tweets and everything that's shared on GCP am I saying that right Glasgow City Payments Group all the tweets that I just retweet because you give us the information first it's like hot off the press when you share it I know it's good to go I don't have to look for information from Glasgow City Council or whatever's the latest information about free school meals I just share whatever's out there and I, I thank you so much for the communication because it's it's really um so up to date and exactly what the parents need to know it's all about the communication and if for parents that are not on Facebook and Twitter and things like that there is a bit of an issue there I think but then schools send out letters and it's up to the parents to tap into these things but there is so much out there um, and I think that was most of the things I wanted to say Catherine back to you. Well thanks very much Joanne well you can see yourself what a wee powerhouse Joanne is and um, we're really really grateful for the work that we do with the parent council and as I say, they're small, but they're mighty. Um, so th there's been big changes for us in, in Parkview. And we like when, when I say the partnerships, I'm talking about myself and the Parent Council's partnership also with staff, with the third sector organisation, my advice is be bold. Um, and, and I can be, I, I can't talk a discount in a shop for me, but if it's for my school, uh, I'm so bold, um, I can go ahead and do that and I can, that can do that with businesses and third sector organisations. I'm not shy that way. Now, we did run into a few problems, not anything major, but um, so I may as well tell you about some of the things. One of the problems we've got is we don't have a lot of ready cash in the school. So, for example, we needed more stuff for wet play. Um, and one of the teachers said, Oh, she said, I love card boot sales and all that. I could spend a fortune at them. And I could, she said, but I could get loads and loads and loads of games and stuff for the classes, but we'd no ready cash. We, you know, because we don't do, or we've not, we actually have got some at the moment inadvertently, but that's not normal. But so we don't have a lot of money in our kind of um, school fund account. So that can sometimes be a wee bit of a problem. But I go to Joanne for that and Joanne keeps us topped up which is super um but if, if you're used to having a really really healthy account on that department then that's you know that's a wee bit just makes it a wee bit more challenging in how you deal with things but it's not a, it's not a big hurdle and we do get a sizable pay for amount so i'm able to um to to do a lot with that like school trips and everything nobody pays anything for that um we have, we've only really had one complaint 
However, it was a, it wasn't a formal complaint. It was a, a complaint at the gate, and there's been maybe murmurings, but not nothing's really become formal. But I did hear somebody say something at the gate. Their kids losing out again, and it was because of a World Book Day event, um, where we had said uh, we have a, we are right across the road from an ASDA, and I'd remembered that last year, the year before that had happened. We used to do the dress up as a character, and the as they were selling their costumes at that point were ranging from ten to twenty pounds for children's costumes, and the very next day after book, World Book Day, they were slashed to a fiver each, and it really broke my heart to think of our parents going out and paying twenty pound for a costume that they could buy the next day for a fiver that their child might never wear again. So. We, we had said, right, we're just going to do fun activities for World Book Day in school. So one of the parents thought that was a wee bit off and she was kind of saying things to other parents and they were kind of in agreement. So I, I heard it and I came over and said, look, let me explain. And that was the point where I thought, now, once a year, I put it in the newsletter, our cost of the school day policy and why we do it. So we, we just do that once a year, generally speaking, at this time of year so that parents know coming up to Christmas, we're not asking anybody for money. There's not going to be, we're having this Christmas fair. There's free stalls, free fun, donations. You know, you could go and you could spend or not spend money and nobody really would know. So, um, yeah, that that's maybe about the only, downs, the, the only downside I can see for some parents that would rather we'd had big charity days, like, like even the Pudsey thing paired that right back. So and we don't have anybody dressing up as Pudsey either. Um, don't, uh, I'd rather not we ban it, we just don't encourage it. So that's where we are, and I, I think, I'd, Joanne, did I miss anything out? Oh, I should also say about prom and things like that. Um, the Parent Council, um, they, they, we've got the uniform bank, people can help themselves to that. We keep it a generic colour, we don't insist on any badges being, um, and on display in the sweatshirts, just navy blue, it's up to them. Um, but the, we, the, the parent council buy the hoodies for children and they give them them in after Easter so they can wear them for the last term. So they're really getting their, their use out of them. Um, and every single person gets a hoodie, every child gets a hoodie, so there's no problem there. And we try and give um, parents, the, the pantry is in a foyer, so nobody has to ask for food, it's there. They just take it. They don't even need to come into the school. They just um, the, the doors open. There's no buzzer to get in. The the first doors open, so we don't know necessarily who's taking the food. If they come during the school day, we would never see them. Um, or, or highly unlikely see them. So, um, yeah. Anything else there, Joanne? That you might have it, the last wee thing I was going to quickly mention: P seven leavers do. Um, we always pay for that. Um, Parent council pays for that with whatever profit we've made from the summer event. So if we have a summer fair, so when the, the P sevens have their do, it's by invitation, and they would try to discourage. Um, like obviously they can wear whatever they want. We would never want them. We you know, it's the you know some parents go a bit OTT, and we always try to discourage that. So it happens now and again where some kids might pull up in a limo, and you're just like, oh no, but. Obviously, that can't sit with our control, but the actual event is completely free, including the food and the DJ, etc. Uh, but thanks very much. That's me. So my name is Nicola Higgins, and I am a pastoral care teacher in Hillhead High School. So um, obviously, majority of my job is supporting pupils and supporting um, families where I can. Um, so I've been in the school for um, eight years now. And for two years of that, it was um, doing an acting deputy head post. And when I was doing that post, I was leading the cost of the school day work in the school. Um, so it's something that I'm really passionate about. And it, it, I guess tonight's a great opportunity just to share um, some of the work that we've been doing and some of the plans that we've, we've got for the future. And um, so if you can move on to the next slide, that would be great. So this slide is just basically showing you on the left hand side um, some of the, the things that have been, been happening in the school, like I would say over the past five to six years. Um, the first one is free school meals. So it's not just that we're giving free school meals, but it's just um, I basically 
took the opportunity to really see what I could do to help families that were maybe entitled to free school meals but not receiving them, helping families with application forms. Also, um, I got some contacts um, for the, the office that deal with them and, and kind of chased up some application forms as well because we, we just basically realised um, a number of years ago that there was actually families that that felt they should be entitled to free school meals and they weren't receiving them. Um, the school uniform and the clothing donations, um, I'll touch on that in a bit more detail, um, but we have basically um, lots of free school uniform and other clothing that, that can be given to, to children and families in need. Um, there's been a lot done recently to promote the free bus travel, um, which I know a lot of people will know about. But again, it was something that we, we realised there was a gap in the school. We realised there was a lot of young people who weren't accessing the free bus travel. Um, and that can obviously save um, families a lot of money. The period equity in the school um, has been running for about six years. And, and I led that in the school when it started. And I guess every year we've just tried to build on it. Um, and, and it's such an amazing initiative that, that's obviously happening throughout Scotland and not only in schools. And we've just looked at how, how we can build on that each year and how we can link in with our primary schools. And I'll go over that in a bit more detail as well. Um, it's already been mentioned in one of the previous um, presentations about the financial inclusion support officer within the school. Um, we, we, were, we were linked in with Nicola McCaskill, who does an amazing job and she has saved so many families um, a lot of money and helped families if they've been in debt um, and that that's something that that we've been promoting and linking in a lot of our families with um, so sometimes they're maybe quite nervous about making that first step and getting in touch with Nicola so we can we, we, we can help with all of that. When I say uh, the next one is resources that's about um, like lots of different resources so it could be stationary it could be study skills um, it could be other resources that, that pupils need um, to help them kind of feel included um, and be involved in all kind of school aspects. Um, we have been very lucky that we've had a hardship fund in the school. This has been through donations from parents, from members of the community, and um, also if there's been families experiencing hardship that we've known about, some, sometimes the money has, has came from like a school fund or the PEF fund as well. Um, digital support, again, in one of the previous presentations, it, it was talked about that we're very lucky that with the iPad rollout, um, our, our kids in our school only got their iPads just when we went into the first lockdown, so it was brought forward, um, and that's been a massive support to families. Um, and I also reached out to families during lockdown and then when we returned to school just to see who, who didn't have Wi-Fi. Um, and, and we supported families um, with that as well. Um, there's been a lot of work done in the school for Duke of Edinburgh, um, just to make it as inclusive as possible. Um, so any pupils participating in Duke of Edinburgh, they get all of their kit for free, um, which could be a massive expense to, to families. Um, one of the other things, just in the last presentation, we're hearing about um, you know limos and, and the, the massive expense to like, um, school proms and one of the the teachers and um, that was doing her probation year in the school last year she introduced say yes to the hill headdress and this was an initiative to um like recycle prom dresses and accessories and shoes um so it wasn't only for the girls but any other accessories or or prom items for for the boys as well um, and pupils could come along um, in a private space or come along with their friends if they wanted and look through dresses and accessories and, and take what they needed so um, that was really useful. On the right hand side I've got um, from the and I know that this was mentioned um, by Sarah the um, action plan came from the cost of the school day toolkit so when I was on maternity leave last year, um, I spent a bit of time going through this toolkit because I had had the time to do it then. And there was so many good examples from other schools and there was a, like a kind of action plan template, which I then used to kind of shape our action plan for this year and next year. 
So the, the ones that I've highlighted in green are the things that we've managed to do just in, in August and throughout August and September um, and into October. And the ones in orange are the ones that we're kind of in the process of doing just now. Uh, we kind of missed the boat with the Halloween costumes this year, but we're definitely going to do it moving forward um, with the, the recycling of, of Halloween costumes. And we're, we're really keen to do it with the Christmas jumpers um, as well for families, because we know that this can be a massive cost. Um, things like an amber stationary charging stations, it's just, you know, other things that we 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 can put in place and offer to families that, that will hopefully take um, reduce the stress um, at a time that's obviously very difficult financially. Um, if you could move on to the next slide, that would be great. The this slide is just um, to go into a wee bit more detail about the cost of the school day information booklet. So this was something that I put in the action plan that I was really keen to put together. Um, and it was just basically so that we had everything in the one place um, for our parents and carers. So uh, working in pastoral care and um, being the deputy in charge of pupil support for a couple of years, there was so many conversations that I was having with parents and carers about uh, how to apply for things and, and basically giving them more information and things we were doing in school. And often I would hear, oh, I didn't know about that, or I'm not sure how to, or I don't have access to um, apply online at home. There was also a lot of families that maybe English wasn't their first language, so um, that, that was a barrier when applying for things or, or finding out more information. So it was about bringing it all into the one place for them. And you can see at the end of it in the contents, there's contact information for pastoral care. Um, and throughout it, there's different um, links to, to websites and, and steps and, and how to do things. Um, so this, I, I guess this um, information booklet, it was about raising awareness and, and just making things easier for our parents and carers. And it's something, it's very much a working document that if we bring new initiatives in and if we have, if anyone else in our working group has other ideas, we, we, will, we will add them into the information booklet. It's been shared on the, the school website. If anyone's interested in having a look, it's been shared on Twitter. Um, and we usually send text messages out to um, all parents with the link and how to access it as well. But as we update it, we'll, we, will, we will share it further as well. Um, if you could move on to the next slide, please. So the next one is just on our enrolment pack. So you'll see um, part of the enrolment pack, the cost of the school day information booklet is in this. This was something that um, our cost of the school day working group thought it would be really useful for families when they're enrolling. And um, we do get a lot of um, new enrolments um, to Hillhead High and the, the deputy head who's doing the enrolment um, now has a pack that they, they use at the enrolment meeting. So in addition to doing the usual paperwork when they're doing an enrolment, they also go through all of these, um, all, all this different information and they can give things away to the parents. So it just means from the get go that, that um, they, they have the, the support and the information that they may need. Um, you can see a table and that's got like all the clubs that are running at lunchtime and after school. They're all free. There's the FISO, the Financial Inclusion Support Officer booklet. If you just move on to the next slide, um, the enrolment checklist on the right hand side, that is the list that, that I put together and that's what the, the deputy head would work towards, uh, just making sure that they're covering all of that. So they'll um, give out the information booklet, they'll check if they're um, wanting to apply for free school meals and give them support, they'll mention the clothing grant again, show them how to apply, um, we'll show them where our um, school uniforms are and where our other clothing is and just explain to them if they do need anything, if they need support with that, it is there. Um, the, the bus pass, the school activ activities timetable and FISO booklet, which I've mentioned, uh, will also let them know that there's uh, free period products and where to find them. Again, like the last presentation, it's 
they're available just to go in for pupils just to take in the in the pastry peer base. Um, and on the right hand side, it's it was it's just other things that I guess we would all offer to all pupils. Um, but it's at that initial enrolment meeting to make sure that we're checking that they've got Wi-Fi, letting them know they'll be getting their iPad, um, and that we've got study materials, stationery, and backpacks available if if they need it. Um, so ho hopefully that's that's a good help for new enrolments, and it's not to say that all of these these things are just exclusive to new enrolments, but but I guess it's important to do that at the start. If you could go on to the next slide, please. Um, this is just a, a couple of uh, photos of our cupboard that we do keep the uniform in and the clothing donations, which you can see in the left hand side. Um, and this is something that's promoted through the usual channels. We promote it through the pupil team pages at assemblies. We've recently promoted it um, through lessons and uh, we, we've sent the information out to, to parents and carers as well. So. Um, that's something that's always available and we always restock it. We, we regularly check, you know, what's running short size-wise um, so that we've got enough in for everyone. If you could move on to the next slide, please. Um, period equity, so it's just to show you this is uh, what we have in the pastoral care base um, and this is available for, for all pupils. Uh, not only for them to come in and access it, you know, when they need it, but we would always promote it before school holiday periods as well, because this can be a time that's particularly challenging for um, families. And um, whenever they come in, we say, you know, take what you need. If you want to come back at the end of the day and put more in your bag, um, you, you can do that. And it's very much just come in and help yourself and no questions asked. Um, if you could move on to the next slide, please. This is the initiative that I'd mentioned about um, the prom dresses. So you can see it was a really nice setting. You should put the full length mirror um, so that you, the pupils could go in and hold them up against themselves. And it's always um, been important for us to keep the, the cost of prom down. So the, the prom tickets have been kept as low as possible. Um, and this, this was obviously something that, that complemented it as well. Um, so we're, we're looking at continuing to do this um, every year moving forward. If you could move on to the next slide, please. Um, I just thought I would also mention this as this has just been set up like within the past couple of months. Um, it was just something that I thought we needed to bring in and it was um, cost of the school day within the curriculum. So a good opportunity for that was during um, Challenge Poverty Week, which was just at the beginning of October. And we, what I did was uh, the, the lesson that was shared, um, I think it was the Poverty Alliance group that, that made it up um, and schools were asked to share it. So all pupils um, experienced this lesson. Um, and Friday period five, we all do different activities in every single class. Um, work through the lesson and then I created a follow-up lesson in addition to this and um, it was about like hill head high linking in with a uh, challenge in poverty and what we were doing um, to reduce the cost of the school day and part of the lesson was for the, the pupils to create a poster and also to complete a survey um, and I just felt it was really important to get their views um, on you know, what, what they knew about it, where the gaps were, and, and to get their suggestions and what we could do to make things better. Um, and I've been in talks with the, the head teacher and the, the senior management team about doing similar um, with a survey to parents. And I know that that was mentioned in the, the toolkit. There's excellent templates there um, because the, the pupils come up with great suggestions in their survey. So I'm sure the, um, our parents and carers will, will too. And so I guess it's just um, everything that I do just now is about raising awareness and and getting everyone else's ideas as well. The, the working group have come up with, with great ideas and it's something that it's not just like one-offs, it's, it's things that we hope to, to embed in the school and, and continue to, to develop and grow and, and, and just support our families in the best way, way that we can really. Um, so ho hopefully that's given exactly. a wee flavour of some of the things that are, are going on in the school and if anyone's got any questions I'd be happy to answer them.
So these are some examples that like, we've been tagged in or, or that have came up in our Twitter feed. Um, St Paul's and Shettleston, they do a lot of work as well, particularly over this summer, they were tagging us in a lot of things. Um, they had a open day um, for all the school, just I think that was at the tail end of summer. And they'd Citizens Advice Bureau in there. They had their warm jackets shop. They've also, I think they do the, the school uniform as well. Um, and then they teamed up with Achieve More Scotland and they were actually giving out um, some free back to school haircuts. Um, there, was some, there was some lovely photos on Twitter of young lads getting their hair cut as well. Um, you've also got St Mungo's, sorry, it's a wee bit fuzzy. St Mungo's Primary is the next one along. And again, it's that whole putting your school uniform out on a rail that families can easily access it. Because what we need to remember as parents and parent council members, whilst we really want to like provide for families and we want to be supportive and we want to maybe do something, we also need to remember that it's always not it's not easy for families to come and ask sometimes for that help. So if your school uniform is maybe all packed away in a cupboard. And they, particularly if they have to come to a parent council member and ask, that's just come and ask another parent. So just think about the way that you, you place some of these items as well, because certainly from our experience of running that citywide clothing bank that we did at the beginning of COVID, a couple of the, the quotes that we got when we looked for feedback was the fact that the service was so discreet and that they wouldn't normally access a service like that. But because they didn't know us and they emailed us, we just put their package together and gave them it. To us, they were just a, another kind of name on a list. That was part of the reason that they, they, they accessed that service. So we've got Sandy Egg Primary as well. Um, they're doing a free Halloween party that you can see, which is the orange picture there. That kind of goes back to some of the information that Joanne was talking about, where they're trying to give the pupils some free fun experiences rather than buying items for them. Just under that, we have got Bella Houston Academy and they hand out to all their S1s a full stationery pack along with a tie. You can see it comes in the tote bag. And then we've got um, All Saints uh, second, All Saints secondary um, up in the top corner with the wee bus that you see. So they were actually putting on a free bus service for their young people to attend their Saturday schools or their supported study classes. So again, that that bus, that's taking the bus fare out of the equation and that might be the barrier for young people to attend some of these supported study classes. And then the last one is from St Francis. So they have talking about World Book Day. They've got events on. They're not going to be dressing up, same, same as Park View. And the focus is more about literacy um, and instead of putting a financial burden on families. So you can see there's like masses of ideas out there. Um, in terms of like if you're looking for ideas for your own parent council or just stop sharing your own PM council um, or your own school to suggest like keep an eye on Twitter because actually a lot of these ideas that Kath and Joanne and Nicola have all shared tonight they, uh, they have been on Twitter this is where I came across Hillhead High School's um, cost of a school day booklet because they shared it on Twitter and and just naturally, I will click on a link to see what it is and what was involved in it. So, um, yeah, just keep your ears open. Come to our monthly parent council forum as well, where they share we share lots of information like this. But I think there's the, the point is that if you're struggling um, in your school to come up with some of these ideas, or you feel that maybe your school is putting a bit of financial burden, whether it's the school or the parent council and your families then maybe it's time to approach and have some of those conversations and raise some of the, the ideas that you've heard tonight. Obviously, if you want to speak to anybody on this call tonight, get in touch with me. And I'm sure no one would mind if I put you in touch with them if you had any more questions.